It's fascinating the diverse types of ships that are out there. Back in school, my friends or classmates and I will argue about what type of ship it is whenever we saw one in an excursion at the movies or at the beach. In this video, we will explore the different types of vessels responsible for carrying everything ranging from liquids, gases and containers to cars and perishable goods. Let's go. According to Statista and the International Maritime Organization, 80% of global trade relies on the shipping industry. So most of the things we use in our everyday lives, uh, the things we eat, the things we wear, our office spaces, uh, construction, machinery, um, medicine, most of these items are shipped via sea making maritime industry the backbone of world trade as the type of goods and commodities commodities transported by sea differs so do the type of ships differ some cargo require very minimal handling requirements while other cargo require very strict and stringent storing and transportation requirements it is understandable that the type of ship used in transporting cooking gas differs from the type of ship used in transporting food that we eat also differs in the type of ship used in transporting cars or even people let's get into the different types of ships for this video i will only be covering the most common and dominant types of ships the ships that are most likely going to be seen in the ports and around us even in the movies first on our list is a tanker vessel. Tankers are types of vessels that are designed to carry liquid types of cargoes. They are also able to carry gaseous types of cargoes in liquid form by either compressing them under high pressure or cooling them down to really low temperatures. They have really large tanks for safe loading and transportation of these cargoes in large quantities. Tankers also differ in the type of liquids or gases they carry, hence necessitating different structural variations in these types of tankers. Oil tanker vessels generally transport oil-based cargo such as crude oil or petroleum products like gasoline, gas oil, kerosene, jet fuel. On the other hand, chemical tanker vessels they load and transport chemicals such as bitumen or asphalt, sodium hydroxide or caustic soda. There are also gas tanker vessels. These transport mainly LPG and LNG products. As the name suggests, they transport gas in liquid state, usually liquefied petroleum gas and liquefied natural gas. These gases are used as fuels both industrially in production and for generating electricity. They are also popularly used in homes for cooking and heating. LPG is pressurized to its boiling temperature where it becomes a liquid, allowing it to be transported in a liquid state. On the other hand, LNG is cooled to its boiling temperature where it becomes a liquid and is then transported in liquid state. These conditions determine the design and structure of different types of gas tankers. The most popular design structures are the Kvena Moss spherical tank and membrane tanks. In terms of weight, about 32% of all cargo shipped annually is shipped using tankers. Up next is container vessels. Container vessels are considered the workhorses of global trade. These ships transport freight in standard sized containers, making loading and unloading a breeze. With a capacity measured in TEUs, 20 foot equivalent units, they carry a wide range of goods, from electronics to clothes and everything in between. Thanks to them, we can enjoy a diverse array of products from around the world. The most common sizes of containers are the 20 foot and the 40 foot. Today, about 90% of non bulk cargo worldwide is transported by container ships, and the largest modern container ships can carry up to 24,000 TEUs. 
example the ever is some container vessels have cranes and some don't those fitted with cranes are called geared container ships they are usually more suited for ports and piers that do not have crane facilities however shore side cranes are the preferred means of loading and discharging containers as they are faster fun fact in march of 2010 at Pont Klang in Malaysia, the world record was set when 734 containers were moved in a single hour. The record was achieved when 9 cranes were used in loading and unloading MV CSCL Pusan, a 9600 TEU capacity container vessel. A key component of dedicated container ship design is the use of sail guides. Sail guides are strong vertical structures constructed of metal in, of metal installed into a ship's cargo holds these structures guide containers into well defined rules during loading and provide some support for containers against the ships rolling at sea about 226 million containers are shipped each year in terms of weight about 16 percent of sea trade is shipped by container vessels then we have the bulk vessel or the dry bulk vessel. These are vessels that are designed to load cargo in bulk. Such cargoes include grains, cement, steel pipes, steel rods, iron ore, coal, and on and on. Bulk carriers make up for over 20% of all ships in the world. In terms of weight, bulk carriers are responsible for over 40% of global freight transported by sea. Bulk carriers range from small single hold ships to large vessels capable of carrying over 400,000 metric tons of dead weight. Bulk carriers come in a number of designs, but two are most common. The geared board carriers, these have cranes, derricks and conveyors that allow them to load and discharge cargo in ports without shore based equipment. They are usually small to medium sized carriers. This gives geared ball carriers flexibility in the cargoes they can carry and the routes they can travel. Then we have the gearless carriers. They are ball carriers without cranes or conveyors. These ships depend on shore-based equipment at their ports of call for loading and discharging. They range across all sizes. The larger ball carriers can only dock at the largest ports. Some of these are designed with a single port to port trade in mind. The use of gearless bulk carriers avoids the cost of installing, operating, and maintaining cranes. Then, general cargo vessels. These vessels are designed to carry a wide range of goods and commodities. While bulk carriers carry unpackaged dry cargoes, general cargo vessels transport packaged items like chemicals, food, furniture, machinery groceries, textiles, appliances, on and on. Typically, they have multiple cargo holds and are equipped with various loading and unloading mechanisms, such as cranes and derricks, enabling them to handle different types of cargoes efficiently. They come in sizes ranging from small coastal vessels to larger ocean-going vessels. Nevertheless, they are typically not as large as dry bulk vessels. I'm used to waiting. Because of the nature and packaging of their cargo, they are better suited to reaching remote ports and cities. The demand for general cargo vessels has dropped drastically over the last two decades due to the introduction of container vessels and TEUs. This is because containers provide better handling, better separation and segregation of cargo, safer storage, as well as easier loading and unloading of cargoes. Now, car carrier vessels. They are vessels designed to carry specifically cars or vehicles. There are other variations that carry trucks and other wheel cargo, but we will cover that in another video. Their distinctive, fe their distinctive feature is a box-like superstructure running the entire length and breadth of the hull. Physically, it looks like a floating rectangular box or a carton or like a modern representation of Noah's Ark made with metal. Another distinctive feature of these vessels is their stern ramp and side ramp 
allowing for the dual loading of thousands of vehicles simultaneously. Within the cargo area, they feature hoistable decks, enabling cars to be loaded on several decks. The capacity of car carriers are measured in car equivalent units CEUs. Currently, the largest car carrier has a capacity of 8,500 CEUs. The world's first partially solar-powered ship is a car carrier called a Riga Leader with a capacity of 6,200 CEUs. Now, RIFA or refrigerated vessels. RIFA ships are designed to transport perishable goods such as meat, fish, milk, vegetables and more in temperature controlled systems. There are two common types of RIFA ships. Conventional RIFA vessels have cargo holds with hatches for loading and stowing along with deck cranes for loading and unloading. Refrigerated container ships carry perishable goods in TEU containers with individual refrigeration units. They differ from regular container ships in design, power generation, electrical distribution, and refrigerated TEU capacity. These ships have sufficient provision for powering each container's cooling system. Refrigerated containers and reefer ships are typically painted white to reflect sunlight and heat, aiding in better cooling within the holds. However, some reefer vessels may be painted in other colors. Fun fact, reefer ships are used to transport blood to war zones and are considered amongst the most expensive refrigerated items. They use two compressors to keep the blood in a healthy and usable state. Other similar expensive refrigerated items include shrimp and caviar. Lastly, fishing vessels. Fishing vessels are used either commercially or recreationally to catch, to catch or hunt fishes or other aquatic animals. Common fishing vessel types include trawlers and sinners, both using nets but different in shape, features and fishing techniques. Fishing vessels have storage and freezing facilities to preserve fish at sea. Some modern fishing vessels also have onboard facilities to, pro to process fish while at sea. There are also a lot more different types of ships such as cruise ships, or passenger ships, there are warships, there are dredgers, there are icebreakers, there are ferries, there are railroads, there are livestock vessels used in transporting animals. To know more about these types of these other types of ships, watch out for my sec the second part of this video. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, comment, subscribe.